is when you're using Dataverse and model-driven apps, you can connect your model-driven applications and your Dataverse data to a public website that can be authenticated or anonymous. And that's it. That's my demo. Bye. Uh, okay. Uh, let's actually spend a little bit more time. My name is Hugo Bernier. I'm a community program manager for PowerPages. And today we're going to talk about how to connect your data a little bit more than what my introduction explained. So if you're wondering what is PowerPages, well, you know, so far we've had, you know, four products in the Power Platform, you know, who were, they were all, you know, taking all the glory and having all the fun. But if you wanted to extend the reach of your applications, you kind of had to use, you know, Power Apps portals behind the scene inside of your Power Apps. And let's face it, it was not necessarily the most uh, maker friendly, right? It was super powerful, super secure, you know, super awesome, not necessarily the most maker friendly. And this is where Power Pages comes in. It takes its rightful place, you know, as, as the, in the family, uh, it's now a top, you know, level product, and it does allow people to actually build really cool websites that are authenticated, that connect to data and in a low code way. In fact, I have this fancy diagram to show you, which kind of shows some of the capabilities of you know, Power Pages, right? So we're, this is kind of what we used to have with uh, Power Apps Portal, and I guess we still have access to that, right? All things like authentication, authorization, security, you know, and things like that. But with Power Pages, now we're adding kind of a whole new layer of functionality a true low code experience, a true pro dev customization. In fact, I would even venture to say that the uh, Power Pages is really the first product that was built from the start with a pro dev uh, story in, in the mix, right from the start. Uh, and the reason for that, if you think about it, you're actually allowing people to create public websites. So you don't want just people to randomly create websites that expose your internal data. You really want to make sure that you're empowering your, your makers, but you're also working with a fusion team, right? With the pro devs and the IT administrators to make sure that you're still respecting, you know, all the regulatory governance and compliance, all the security and everything. There's out of the box solution templates, and I'll show you one of them and an extensible data model, which is going to be the focus of our call today. And I kind of like to be cheeky a little bit, but Power Pages is really powered by Power Apps portals behind the scenes. So if you're wondering, you know, what's the difference? It's actually just, a, again, a layer that makes it easy for the, the Fusion team to build websites on top of the Power App, Apps portal functionality. So when we first introduced the series, right, we talked about What's the difference between portals and pages? We talked about then we'll you know we'll do things like talk about branding your site and securing your content and connecting to your data. But if you think about it, you can build websites, you know, low code websites with a lot of technologies um, and lots of really cool cool products out there that do that. But the one thing that is unique, I think, about Power Pages is this little bit right here, right? the ability to integrate with the Power Platform and to connect your business data. So today, let's actually geek out on connecting with your data. So the first thing you should do if you haven't done so already, and if you haven't done so already, I don't think we can be friends. Uh, you should go to powerpages.microsoft.com and sign up for a trial. And once you get there, you'll get something like this. And so you can just kind of go and click on try it for free put in your email address here and agree and start your free trial and then what will happen is it'll say something like there's no sites in this environment because you haven't created the site yet so let's create a site and there's a little spinning here what there you go so now we'll get to pick a template and there's a whole bunch of templates there and i kind of walked through the templates in a previous uh demo but i'm going to pick the after school program registration today and you can see it's kind of got a, a different look and feel but the reason why i want to use this template is because it's got some cool data model that i want to show so let's pick this template i'm gonna give it a name and i will Click on done. 
And I've sped this up, by the way, because it, sometimes it can take a little bit longer, especially when you're trying to demo. All right, and once you're done, it'll say your site is ready and you can just go and edit the site. So let's do that. So it's pulling up my site. Now what it's doing is actually grabbing again, all the tables, all the, the pages, and all the navigation structure that has been put in place for this site. And you can see here on the left, I've got kind of the navigation. I've got a whole bunch of different pages. And then I always have the what you see is what you get experience, right? That rich editor uh, function. Not going to be spending too much time on the rich editor today because, again, we want to geek out on data, right? So uh, let's actually do that. Let's first of all, let's preview the site, show you what it what kind of experience it has. So all this data that you're seeing here is actually coming from my Dataverse environment. So all my courses, all these grades, all the, you know, these categories, that's all coming from Dataverse and it's connecting in a secure way. And then I can do things like filtering uh, and things like that right from here. There's different pages in that template. Uh, so let's just show you an experience where I, you know, let's say that I'm a parent and I have children. Uh, these are my attendees that are attending to my after school uh, you know, programs and things like that. Uh, and if I kind of move forward a little bit, we're going to focus today on. We're going to focus on this experience here because we want to we want to start talking about the data experience, the table experience, but, and then we'll start showing you on a future session. We'll show you how to create forms and how to customize the look and feel of your of your things. But here, so I've got a table. And by the way, for the savvy people in the in the audience who have used Dataverse and who have created views, this is actually directly coming from a view from Dataverse. And so the cool thing about it is if you already have experience with Dataverse, you already know how to create kind of these these queries for uh, power pages. All right, so let's go behind the scenes. Let's go look at what it looks like. So if I go back to my site editor, you'll see that I have different workspaces here. And if I go in the data workspace right here, I actually see some tables that are already in use in this site. Now again, this is Dataverse tables. And I've got a contact table, which is probably always going to be there if it's an authenticated site. I got a course table that's got a whole bunch of kind of columns here, and I'm not going to go through the entire columns. And I got a registration table, which is, well, where people or parents have registered their children for courses or where they have registered themselves. So if I go back to the course here, um, I have kind of cool list of courses that I can use, but let's actually show you that. Inside of that, I also have access to the views, right? And views are something you can do in Dataverse to, to select which columns you want to show and to filter and to sort uh, the data you want to show. So in Paragraphs portals, what you used to have to do is you used to have to go back to Dataverse to make these customers JSONs. Now we can actually just kind of go in and create a view or create forms to actually expose that data. All right, so let's move forward. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a new table, right? Again, if you're more comfortable going into Dataverse and created the table from there, you can absolutely do that. But here I'm going to create a table, let's say to store my locations, right? And I can do that directly from within uh, the Power Pages experience. Now it takes a little bit of time because it's creating the database schema behind the scenes and everything. But eventually what we should be able to do here is we should be able to start adding records to our table. And I could be fancy here and I could add a whole bunch of columns like address and things like that. But trust me, it is really boring to watch me type all these column names. So I'm just going to enter a few locations here just to show you. And speaking of boring, now you have to watch me type all these locations. And when people watch me type, I usually make extra typos. Like now. <laughs> All right, one more. That's it. Singapore. Cool. All right, so I've added some locations. Now, 
let's actually look at what the experience would be to actually add this table in my site. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the page editing workspace. And I'm just going to add a new page. Now, later calls, I'll show you how to you know, use fancy layouts or create your own custom layouts. But for now, we're just going to start with a, uh, let's just pick a blank layout. Let's add this. That way we're not going to get distracted by all the other fancy stuff. And you see right away, I've got kind of a, a menu of components. I'll just pick list. And I have two lists that have already been created for the site, but I want to pick the new table that I've created. So I'll just go locations. And I know there was already a location table in the thing, but you know the one that has a, a weird prefix is the one that I just created. And then I'll pick one of the views that I created. And I'll just do that. And then I'll just call it uh, active location. Sounds good. Now, again, later we'll show you how you can do things like allowing people to create records, you know, viewing details, editing a record, deleting a record if they have permissions to do so. But for now, we're going to skip that. But let's use the fancy search capability. All right. So now I've just dropped my list. And what I should be able to do is I should be able to go preview that. So again, I always click on the preview. Uh, by the way, when you make changes to Power Pages or Power Apps portals, it's always a good idea to um, just do the preview because it forces a refresh. You don't have to do a sync. You don't have to do Control F5. But look what's happening here. It's saying I don't have permissions. I'm pretty sure I have permissions. I'm admin, admin, mech admin face. Um, so I should have permission to that. Let's go take a look at what I forgot to do. If I go back to my setup workspace, I now have the ability to add table permissions. And again, later call, I'll show you how we can actually go deep, dig deep into these permissions. But you see that I have different permissions for different roles in the website to different tables. So let's create a new table permission. I always like to name my permissions the thing that I want people to be able to do. Uh, so if I can type, view all my locations or all locations. Now I'm going to pick the location table. Again, I have to remember the right one. And you'll see here I have an access type. An access type allows me to decide, well, how do I want people to be able to see that data? Global access means every record in the database. Contact access would be records that are only for me. Account access would be records that are related to me and my company. And self access is just my own record. So I can go change my picture or something like that. So the permission I'll add here is I'll add read, but I could also add read, write, delete if I wanted to. I don't want people to start uh, creating or deleting my locations. And then I can pick who I want to have access to these. So I can say, well, anybody who is just visiting the site and hasn't logged on and authenticated users can actually see this. So let's click on save. And now I should be able to actually go back to my page where I embedded the list. I should be able to just go refresh my my preview. And if the demo gods are with me, yay, I now can see the list of records. Now, again, I could have made a fancier view and you know uh, added some extra data, but right away I have the ability to do search. I have the ability to view all the records. I can sort uh, things that's built in. Now we've barely scratched the surface. We haven't made the list fancy yet. We haven't, you know, we haven't added uh, personalized permissions. We will do that on a future call. Again, we're trying to make these 15 minute uh, increments. Uh, so we'll have tips for the next year uh, to walk with you. I hope this was useful. Keep an eye, by the way, on the release plan and I'll drop the, I'll drop the link in the chat. But there is a release planner that allows you to see all the updates that are coming up within the Power Platform and Dynamics 365. So you can keep an eye on when Power Pages will be released officially as GA. In the meantime, it's in preview. And if you need anything from me, please don't hesitate to reach out. David, back to you. Awesome. Thank you, Hugo.